Dobar dan i dobro došli na konferenciju za štampu koju će držiti gospodin Cyril Miller. On je podpredsednik Svetske banke za Evropu i Centralnu Aziju. Gospodin Miller je bio u dvodnevnoj poseti Srbiji i sažeći svoje utiske tokom te posete. Cyril, the floor is yours. Thank you, Vesna. Hvala, Vesna. Uh, it's a great pleasure Veliko for me to be visiting yesterday and today Belgrade. Um, this morning we had very productive discussions with the Minister of Finance, Mr. Mali, uh, Minister of Energy and Mining, Mr. Antic, uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Construction, Mihailovic, and Prime Minister Brnovic, as well as President Vucic. Um, what my, the purpose of the visit is to actually was threefold. First is to discuss with the government how Serbia can use the current economic opportunities of having successfully stabilized its economy and growing now a three or four percent a year. And to try to accelerate that growth so that the income of the people of Serbia can increase. And our assessment is that it would be possible for Serbia to grow at 7% of a year and to do so over a sustained period of time. And the simple compounding, if you do seven years of growth at 7%, you double your income uh, during that period. Um, the, second, the second purpose of the visit was also to sign a number of agreements because the World Bank just approved three projects for Serbia in a total amount of $142 million. The first project is a project for regional trade and transport facilitation, which will reduce both time and cost of trade across the Western Balkans. This is a regional project, the first phase of $90 million, of which $40 million is for Serbia, covers Serbia, North Macedonia and Albania. What is Extraordinary in the Western Balkans is that the delays at crossing borders are five times longer in this part of the world than in the European Union. And that trucks actually spend some 26 million hours of time crossing the borders every year. Um, the second project that uh, we signed today is 60 mil, uh, 50 million dollars, which is to enable digital governance. It will finance the digitalization of several public services in Serbia. In Serbia. Um, and these public services are important to citizens in their everyday lives and will help managing or engaging with governments in terms of key services. It will also, this project will also enable to make sure that that data collection um, on the performance of government is properly done and then the performance of government can be properly assessed. The third project of $52 million is for tax administration modernization. Serbia has made very strong progress in improving its public finances and its tax collection. But it's also the time now to actually modernize how tax administration is performed in the country. So this was the second purpose of my visit. The third purpose uh, of my visit was to discuss what the World Bank program can be this year and in the years ahead. And I want to say that actually we are completing 
In the next 12 months, our five-year plan, our five-year program for Serbia, during which time we will have committed 1.6 billion dollars of four projects in Serbia. And these projects focused on economic governance and improving the role of the state and on building really a private opportunities for private sector growth and for citizens to participate in the economy. Over the next few months, we hope to approve another three projects, so to complete that cycle, to complete the plan. One will be in agriculture modernization, one will be on entrepreneurship innovation, linking also the newly established science fund, and the third one would be a budget support operation to really uh, enhance the capacity uh, to accelerate the gro economic growth that I was mentioning before. Um, I will look forward to your question, and my colleagues and I, Linda van Gelder, she is the regional director for the Western Balkans, and Steve is our country manager here in Belgrade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Predstavite se, samo hvala. Miloš Obradović, novinar Danasa. Može na srpskom, da. Zanima me ovo poslednje što gospodin Miller napomenuo, budžetsku podršku budžetu za podršku rastu. Ako bi mogli malo detaljnije, šta bi to značilo, pošto budžet već ostvaruje suficit u ovom dijelu godine, pa mislim... Ako ima još pitanja da uzme, mislim još jedno bar pitanje da odgovori, da ne mora da odgovara odmah. Nema, dobro. Ok, so... Actually, it's a very good question you're asking. Why should we support the budget at a time when the budget is in surplus? So actually, these budget support programs um, do two things. One, they do provide, so when, when government uh, prepares its financing plan for a year, it does continuously not only collect tax revenues, it also borrows money. And it's actually the sum of the two that has then generates a government uh, surplus or not. Now, one of the positive developments in Serbia has been that thanks to this improved uh, position of public finance, your overall debt is decreasing. So this budget support operations we are uh, planning is part of the government's overall funding program for uh, 2019 and 2020. Um, so, however, what would we, why do we think it is important to continue to do that is because in these budget support operations, what the World Bank provides, it provides a set of analysis and agreements with governments to prioritize certain measures that will aim to improve the performance of what we've done in the past, for instance, of the public sector, so improving tax collection, but improving also the effectiveness of uh, public services, um, for instance, an area of focus is public procurement, but also we would like to use these programs, as we usually do, to make sure that the agenda for accelerating economic growth is well established, well detailed, and that its implementation uh, is robust. We only provide budget support once these measures, these actions are taken. So in a way, if you 
govorili, realizovane. Tako da je to neka vrsta nagrada za rezultate ako koji smo se dogovorili i mera koje su implementirane. Zato mi planiramo to učinsku potrošnju. Ali ne fokusiramo se više na stabilizaciju, već se fokusiramo na rast i na mogući Ima još pitanja? Da li ima još pitanja? Dobar dan, večerni novosti, Danijel Ilić Krasić. Htjela bih samo o pojašnjenju u vezi sa ovim procentom od 7% privrednog rasta. Gde vidite osnov za toliki privredni rast? Hvala. So, Today, the growth rate of uh, Serbia, the potential growth rate, or if you want, the, what the economy can generate in terms of growth, today is about 3.54%. So, to achieve 7% growth would take the economy to create more opportunities and to perform better. And so we are currently doing an analysis of what can be these drivers of additional growth in Serbia. And I can share with you that a few areas that are important. One is very important to continue the very robust macroeconomic policies that have been implemented over the last few years. Without macroeconomic stability, it will not be possible to accelerate economic growth. The second, it will take a continued shift from an economy that is dominated by the public sector to an economy that brings more opportunities for private sector growth. And there, in terms of what does it take to grow in a way the private sector and provide opportunities, there are areas in financial sector. So, for instance, today you have a a very liquid, uh, very well capitalized banking sector, but that banking sector is not a very good fit to actually fund new businesses, uh, take a lot of risks in new ventures, and so the issue of access to finance is one area where we feel needs a lot of attention. The second, uh, the third area, which is equally important, is to make sure that you have competitive markets. You want to the power of competition is that it gives businesses, people, opportunities to compete and basically increase economic activity. You, when competition is impeded, what you have is typically is a few dominant players determine the prices but also determine the markets. And we are seeing in Serbia really much more vibrant markets today that can grow further. I am thinking of areas like technology, we were mentioning before agriculture, but I think also the whole sphere of innovation, science and so on is important. Now, a third area that, or a third set of issues that is very important is around the building the skills and the capacities of people. When you ask enter firms, what are their constraints today for their growth in Serbia, they will say that finding skilled employees is one of their main challenges. So we believe that the focus on improving education, improving the linkage between education system and jobs and markets is very, very important. So in what I'm saying is, what will it take? It will take first continuation of stability and building opportunities. Second is doing reducing the role of the state in the productive sectors. 
Third is enabling opportunities, for instance, through access to finance, and finally focusing on the key assets over the medium term. And I mentioned also obviously these issues of competitive markets. So we are doing a quite extensive analysis of that, and we are even attributing what the potential growth in each of these areas could be. We have not finalized our study now, but we will do so in the coming months, and I'm sure my colleague will want to be keen to talk to you about it going forward. Uh, maybe, maybe I wanted to add one thing. You know, for, for the World Bank, we always try to support countries in improving their ability to grow and income for people to increase. And sometimes it's difficult to make the case how to do so. And here in Serbia, we feel it is challenging to achieve it, to make it happen, but to know how to do it we believe is now quite clear. And that is a big difference from a few years ago. And you can see that in some sectors becoming much more competitive and attractive. Um, and so we, the, for instance, the project I was mentioning on trade and transport, you can start seeing the opportunities for Serbia to be the hub for logistics, for trade in the Western Balkans and in the broader region. Prvi put, drugi put, prodato. Hvala vam, najlepše doviđenje. Thank you. Thank you.